what does this have to do with this or this and this and how did it bring us here and here and here I figured we needed to jump back a little bit because I had some questions about the absolute basics. And this is, in my mind, the absolute basics. This is a diode, the single building block of all digital circuits. The diode. is a single PN junction. So then what is a PN junction? Well, it is the interface between two different types of semiconductors. So if we look at it kind of like this, it's pretty simple to really get a good handle on it. We'll call this the P region, the positively charged region. And we will call this the N region or the negatively charged region. And this is all semiconductor material, generally silicon. So we have positively charged ions here. We have negatively charged ions here. And in here, we have basically a combination of the two. This is the interface, the boundary. This is the PN junction. On the P side, we have excess holes. And on the N side, we have excess electrons. So a, a, a silicon atom has four electrons and by doping them and there are many different things that we can use to dope them like for instance for the p-type doping most common are boron aluminum nitrogen blah 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 and for the n-type it's phosphorus arsenic, antimony, I have to look make sure I'm still in the frame here. Those are our dopants that we're using here. And when we dope our silicon atom with the boron, it creates a hole where that electron used to be. So now it wants an extra electron. And then if we dope our silicon with the phosphorus, it creates an excess electron. But the silicon is happy with four electrons. So this one is going to cross over to that excess hole. Now here's the strange part that's kind of hard to wrap your head around. The excess electrons diffuse or migrate into this boundary layer. But so do the holes. The holes move. And then we have a strange combination going on here. 
and this boundary layer, this PN junction, which was first reported by Russell All, another engineer at Bell Labs. Man, Bell Labs must have been the place to be at the beginning of the 21st century. I mean, it's just, you know, incredible, right? So if we look at our diode, this is our diode, this is the anode, this is the cathode, and this is, I'll, I'll draw our little bar here so you know how we're look, looking at it. And in here is our boundary layer. So when we apply a charge to the anode, and the circuit is completed, we need to overcome this strange combination in the boundary layer. And that takes about 0.6 volts, what is known as the voltage drop. So if we apply a one volt charge to the anode, we're going to end up reading 0.4 volts somewhere else in the circuit because we're going to lose 0.6 volts. This is the way it works. I mean, there are other things that are shock key diodes that use less, but we're, we're sticking to the basic PN junction and the basic diode here for what we're talking about. So we are able to overcome that boundary layer, this confusing entanglement of excess electrons and excess holes and everything kind of opens up like a combination lock and current can flow. So how does all this get together? And next becomes the basis of the transistor. Well, if we say that V is our electric potential. And the little p is our charge density. And we have our permittivity, which is, we'll call it the size of the holes. And then we'll have our magnitude of charge. That's our other voltage that we're putting in. And then we'll call lowercase d sub p is the width of the p layer. And d sub n is the width of the N layer, then we can figure out our drop and everything else using Poshian's equation, which says minus That's the equation. Fucking forget it. You don't need that. All you need to know is that this transistor is two of those in series. It is two PN junctions basically back to back. And when we take that and we put more of them together on a single piece of silicon, we get an integrated circuit. And when we put many integrated circuits together, we get something cool, like a single board computer, or a cell phone, or any of the millions of electronic gadgets that we use today. But when you come right down to it, and you strip everything away, all you're left with are a bunch of these diodes, a single PN junction, 
a one-way check valve for electrons. They go this way, they don't go that way. In normal circumstances. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this brief layman's introduction to the PN junction and diodes. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks to all my patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Thank <music> you.